Welcome to the dungeon. <laughs> These are the triplo, uh, triplo body spruce gooses, geese, with uh, 12 fret short scale necks, similar to the Norman Blake models. These uh, nice, nice tight uh, fit. Interesting thing is under the under the pale moonlight, yeah. we get a beautiful, beautiful red spruce color. So these are, oh, I unplugged that one. These are fit and with the fitting, what we're looking for is about a sixteenth of an inch gap at the 12th fret, which is exactly, it's hard to see it, but it's exactly what we have. And that'll give nice low action. So these are pretty much done. Do you want to see my mistakes? I do. So let's see. Oh, by the way, this is my humidity. Wow, removable bridges. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. So this is 41% humidity. Tight fit. Tight fit. No doubt. So this is the good one. This is a, a pretty clean, pretty clean uh, routing. I love this boxing. I've been doing that throughout and I've been doing herringbone on the back. I liked it to uh, aim the herringbone away from the center seam. Love spruce. So somebody online made a comment, spruce is the most boring wood. Why don't you pick something fancy for the back and sides? You know, something with uh, wild grain, you know. Oh, they have a point. So this is this is the one that has had the chip out issues and I wanted you to see that I have used my my Linda Manzer recommended baby brush and mixed uh, uh, some beige with some white and it's right in this right in this little area here Maybe you can see that. Mm. You see that? Yeah. It's hidden pretty well. I also have a little spot here, right here. I don't think anybody's going to real, really mind. No, I've no, got no. some spots along this binding here. A little bright in the camera. Yeah. And one little spot. Right here. But, like I said, you have to be... And it reminds me that this is a uh, handmade machine. Well, that's for sure. I don't have a lot of equipment down here. I have my hand tools and I've got a couple of... I've got a, a table saw. I've got my wonderful Inca bandsaw, which I've had for many, many decades. Oh. And but watch, watch your head, don't bump your head. Oh, I think I'm all right. Maury's all right. <laughs> so 
So I got have my anchor band saw, got my uh, Galaxy drill press, got a little sander, and a little chop saw, and that's pretty much it. Um, my little stash of uh, Brazilian rosewood here. For some reason, I ended up with a lot of uh, a lot of Brazilian three-piece backs. Um, and I don't know what to do with them. I have some very nice uh, Brazilian So this is rejected Martin D21 back. You see it's rejected because of this wild, um, what would you call it, blemish? Well, but beautiful, say, beautiful spidery yeah, grain down yeah, the middle. They certainly wouldn't reject it today. I Well, they probably, they might, but it's, uh, it's deserving to be used. Absolutely. And lots and lots of three-piece backs in here. To keep you busy for quite a while. Yeah, I don't have a lot of sides to go with the Brazilian, so kind of at an end. Unless you just decide to use some other wood for the sides. So this is one of my pride and joys. This is a uh, beautiful Cocobolo handled pearl and laid chisel. Uh, this was uh, made for me by Tim Teal. Oh, um, that sounds so it's real sharp. Like Tim. This is a, a neck, a neck fitter's chisel, and it's uh, one of my prized possessions. So these will go off to lacquering on Monday, and then probably in five or six weeks they'll come back to me, and uh, I think I'm going to glue the necks in and then and then uh, mount the tuning machines. I've got beautiful beautiful Waverleys. This is what I like. I, I uh, I don't want to skimp on anything. So these have Ivoroid buttons uh, to match the bindings. Nice. I don't like gold at all. I like the nickel. I think the gold is garish. And, um, you know, just seems to be what they deserve. I'm looking forward to hearing them one of these days. It is a fascinating design with the uh, 12 fret neck and a 14 traditional 14 fret body and the bridge farther back. Yeah. So the, the X brace is right here. So the bridge plate is over here. So you see it is a pretty large triangle. Uh, between the bridge plate and the and the X, and I'm not worried about that at all. I think I think they'll they'll sound good. They have a similar note. You know that's as as opposed to nothing on the back. Not much on the sides, just a drum on the top. And yet the uh, back and sides make a noticeable difference in the tone of these guitars than your other guitars that you made with other woods. Yeah. Uh, this 
whole area is pretty active. So you know Milt Hess? Milt lives right down the street from me. I didn't know that. And he, he's right on Rosen Avenue. And uh, he's, he ran the Martin Repair Department and he's unbelievably knowledgeable about guitars. And, and he's uh, working on some instruments uh, between David Musselwhite and me and, and he's building some for uh, me and Steve Miller, some Brazilian Rosewood D45s. Wow. And uh, um, he's voicing uh, the Red Spruce Tops and you should hear those. Wow. You know, Milt really knows what's going on. Very so, cool. More so than I do. So I go to him for guidance. Huh. Really cool, Dick. Wow. So hold that pose for a second. <laughs> So these are little sanding sticks and probably my most, my most used tool. Um, they just come in handy for absolutely everything. Um, you use the same grade all the time? Well, two different, different grades, uh, rougher and I even. just use two, two types, um, 220 and 120. This is also indispensable. So this is my laminate trimmer. And this is, uh, you can set the, the depth of your cut this way, and then you can set your height of your cut this way to cut the binding, the binding ledges. So, uh, Very carefully. The best, <laughs> the best possible tool and my draw knife, which uh, is quite old and very sharp, thanks to Tim Teal again. Mm -hmm. So are you carving your own necks? Completely, yeah, for, from raw blocks. From raw blocks? Wow. Raw blocks of spruce I carved. Okay, well, that's maybe the most impressive thing that I've learned today after yeah. playing all your different necks. And then, you know, the, the little tiny curvature up by the neck where the volute is, I did that with, with this. Um, wow. And I didn't use any templates. I did, actually, I did use a template. I used a uh, go no gauge uh, for the first fret and the tenth fret. This is a, an old Martin template. I don't even know what it's for, but I used this to, to set my thicknesses. Huh. I do have templates, but they, they didn't work with my width. You just go by head, heart, and feel. Yeah, and and you know they're a little they're a little off center and a little wonky, and they, I might I might um, if you inspect those necks carefully, you might see what I'm talking about. I think they need more V shape on the on the edges, especially toward the nut. If you close your eyes. Right where your right where your thumb hits, feel that. I think that probably needs a little bit of work. Jumping right in there, right at that cheek, right where the cheek kind of just drops off. Maybe for somebody who's used to playing V-neck American style as opposed to the classical, but but uh, I can see, I guess I can see what you're saying. Well, uh, before I. Before I send them off, I'm gonna go over them once. But it, the wood is just so, so beautiful, like a little baby's butt. Not that I would know. <laughs> Not in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I have jokes. I'm keeping them myself. I'm not saying them all. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope uh, I gave you what you need to produce a good piece. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. No, thank it's you. Just, it's like thank the you. Freak of the Three Stooges. <laughs>